In the four years you were making after we leave, how are you balancing you were a professor at Occidental College here in Los Angeles or Eagle Rock, and you have a family, you have children. How are you balancing all that? That's a lot. The truth is, I think that that balance is never perfect. Uh, I often joke that what I think doesn't get talked about enough uh, is that the stage of life, at least that I'm in right now, is I don't know that I do anything as well as I wish that I could, but I'm just trying to get all of it to at least be pretty good. Uh, being a dad, being a professor, being a husband, being a filmmaker, uh, they all have their demands. Every one of them is awesome. I wouldn't give up any of them. Uh, but no, for sure, making this movie is one of the most difficult things I've ever done. Uh, and I don't say that actually looking for pity, but more like I think there just should be a more candid acknowledgement of how hard it is to balance those things. Uh, you know, for part of this movie, I was like, I was a part-time professor, part-time stay-at-home dad, and trying to make a feature. And then, um, you know, now I'm a full professor, at, a full-time professor at Occidental, and uh, you know, I have two kids now instead of one when I started. Um, and for sure, yeah, like that balance is difficult in so many ways. In terms of just time, when can you get free to do it? Uh, in terms of just resources. Uh, you know, those other things, there's just spending money and, 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 and that sort of stuff. And then more generally, the, the hardest one I find is the shift in mindset. That if I were to really encapsulate the phase of life I'm in right now, it's having to shift gears and sort of take off different hats and put different hats on with no real transition point. So to go from dad to professor to filmmaker to dad to, you know, like, like around that, uh, there's no mental space to sort of flip over. And I've just accepted, I think that's just where, it, where I am right now. Uh, and I think there's this image of like filmmaking that is almost like it's divorced from the rest of life. But again, you know, I think that this is the reality of independent cinema. And every filmmaker I know knows this. I, I actually think we should talk about it more, which is to say, if you are feeling like, uh, man, it's really hard to like, you know, pack that lunch for the kid <laughs> and then like go to your job, in my case, like teach this lesson correctly and then make it to set on time and shoot this shot, having remembered everything you needed and being in a state of mind to be creative. If you're like, that's difficult. I want to say like, yeah, it is difficult. And I don't know who we're kidding if we're saying it's not. Uh, and, and, and to me, like, and that's fine. Like, I think that like that struggle is a reality. And so I'm just trying to maximize it and optimize it, but I don't think it's going to go away. <laughs> Yeah, I see too much of this mindset of like, I got this and I, I can totally, you know, I, no, nah, this doesn't, you know, and I wish sometimes people were more transparent with, yeah. no, this is really tough. And yeah, I don't know if I do have it, but I'm still going to show up. You know? And I think it's important to acknowledge that again, because I think uh, it, it, it's an, the amount of time you can devote to filmmaking, I do think becomes a representation of an amount of privilege that you have. And I think it is important for us to recognize, by the way, that it is actually harder for different people to get that half a day to even shoot a scene that I'm talking, you know, that like I'm talking about, or to get an hour to do that. And that big societal things like that are part of the reason for the representation gap in behind the camera and in front of the camera. And that, that's why it's hard to address these things. You know, that it can't just be, oh, we'll open up our application process or we'll open up our, you know, how receptive we are to other ideas. That's awesome. But you can have removed a lot of barriers to entry and still larger sort of structural problems in like society can be altering who even tries to step through those doors. That's a really good point. I think that relates to interning as well. Right. Even though, you know, there's a lot of backlash about interning. The, the same entire thing. industry is like, I think, built on this idea of, well, we have all these dreamers and the ones that are the most passionate, they'll come and put in the time. And I have to be honest, like again, I don't say this to have any judgment against any individual who says that, but I think it's reflective of a structural bias that if you have a system where the measure of like whether someone is deserving is they prove it to you by how much time they put in, that is equivalent to saying your system is structurally biased against people who, who for whom time is a greater resource, a harder to find resource. And that's going to be women, people of color, people of lower income. Uh, and so we have to be careful about, I think it's always important to judge passion and to see who's serious about what they want to do. But measuring that through certain metrics that we've used in the past, I do think contributes to the homogeneity of the industry. Right. Single moms, single dads. Exactly. And, and even if they do have time, are they going to be so tired exactly. that they can't finish it? You know, I think that's one thing that you don't think about when you're younger is, oh, yeah, I can totally do this and yes. I can balance all this stuff. You don't realize how tired you're going to be. Mm -hmm. and, and you can't think clearly. You know, And I think that's... Um, yeah, anyway, that's another video. So.